sometimes I walk into the wig store and I try on the wig and I play with a bunch of wigs and I know exactly what I'm getting. And other times I like to save a buck and buy my wigs online. I think probably everyone does. And the problem with buying a wig online is sometimes you don't exactly know what you're getting. And even when you do know exactly what you're getting, you get it and you take it out of the package. By the way, this one is my new frosty beach waves because those sexy beach waves are so in right now and I don't have a lot of hair. So this is gonna sort of be kind of like my own hair, but give me a little more oomph when I want, you know, that big dramatic sexy look. So I love the dark root. A darker rooted look is really, really in and really, really popular right now. And one of the things I like about a darker root with my silver hair is sometimes, well, since I've gone silver, sometimes it feels a little pastel. I feel a little faded out. And with that dark root, I feel like I get a little more punch, a little more color, a little more drama, which is nice when I'm on camera or for a special event. So that brings us to the wig I just got. So we've got our beachy waves, not a whole lot longer than what I've got on my head right now, but with that nice dark root and let's face it, a lot more hair than what I have on my head. This is a lace front wig. There are lace front wigs and there are hard front wigs. And well, they're each a little different and I'm not entirely sure I understand the reasons why, but we're gonna talk to an expert today. So first thing you do when you get your wig out, you're gonna see that it's got these Yikes! These little doohickeys in the back so you can fit it to your own head. You don't hook these like this. There are little inside, you've got little loops and you will select whatever is the right size so that it's as snug as it can be on your head. I have a super small head, so I'm gonna put it on the smallest setting. Sometimes I use a wig cap, sometimes I don't. Just for, just for shits and giggles right now, I'm just gonna show you what this wig looks like, slamming it on my head, blind. I don't even have a mirror in front of me, so I have no idea what I'm doing here. It's not gonna be good, I'll tell you that much. History has shown me that. How bad is it? Is it really bad? Because I'm thinking, it's probably not good. But this is sort of what we all go through when we try on a wig. We get that wig, we're all excited, and we put it on our heads and we go, yeah, that looks like a wig. So now I'm gonna introduce you to my wig designer who is going to help guide us through how to take that wig out of the box and get it on your head so that you don't look like you're wearing a wig and that you feel really good and really pretty and you go out and have fun in your wig because life's short, wear a wig. Let's get him in here. Byron, help me. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi, I'm Byron Batista of Wigs by Byron and Monique and I have been friends since high school. High school. We're both the same age. 22. More or less. Give or take. <laughs> now she's just taking this out of the box, so it's uh, supposed to have a loose curl to it, but as she said, there is a lace front in it. A lace front, as opposed to a hard front, will give you a more natural appearance. It actually looks as if the hair is growing from your skin, as opposed to a hard front, which has thicker fronts and they're heavier, the hair is heavier. Um, this also has less hair in it than most wigs, so it will move better and it won't look as fake. Um, it actually works really well right now, but as you can see around her face here, it's very uh, clear, but there is a lace that goes right around here. And what we wanna do is we wanna cut that. And the best thing to use for that 
is a pair of pinking shears. Thank you, because I forgot what name they were. <laughs> I just totally forgot what name they were. Let me get mine. Okay. They happen to be pink. Pink pinking shears. That's so wonderful. Brand new. So they're nice and thing sharp. Going on. Yeah, yeah. Are we going to do this on my head? No, actually, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this back off. Okay. And what you want to do is see where the hair itself is growing from and cut as close to that with the pinking shears as possible. So here's the lace front. You can see that it's about an inch and a half all the way around and it's rounded and it already comes, some of them already come uh, with the variegated edge on it. This particular lace is more sturdy uh, and heavy than most laces that I deal with. Um, so um, feel free to go right in and take your pinking shears and just trim right along the edge of the hair. And if you just catch a little bit of it, it's okay because you know what? A real hairline is not perfect. And that's the one thing about these lace fronts is it's perfect the perfect line of hair and nobody really has that you have well i have parking spaces but other <laughs> people have other people have uh you know not perfect hairlines so you just go and cut right along the hairline and the reason i use the pinking shears is to give it that little zigzaggy edge uh -huh. so there's not a hard edge on it which is easier to blend oh okay so i just go right around and just take that right off. Oh, you did that so fast. When I do it, I literally, it takes me an hour and it's painstaking and, and it's- That's it. That's the that little was... piece that comes off. Throw that away. Bye-bye. And now, now- I'm gonna ask you a question. Sure. Sometimes people choose to leave the lace in the wigs. That's something that they do in theater a lot. And that's really why lace wigs got started. Why do you use the lace? Why do you keep the lace in a theatrical production? Usually uh, because the lace will uh, tend to, the edge will tend to stretch or tear um, after multiple uses. Um, so the longer the lace front is, the more you can cut off of it as time goes by. Usually what it does is it holds down the microphone. If you go to a musical production, you'll see a, their microphone and it's sometimes on their forehead. And people often ask, what is that little bump on their forehead? And I remind them that it's a microphone and the mics, the, the wiring for the microphone usually goes through the wig and then up to the top and it shoots down right here. Okay. So that's what the lace fronts are for on stage. Now, if you're gonna be wearing this in real life, you don't want that. Yeah, you don't, you want don't that need that line. because exactly. you're, you're it's going to be too obvious if you have that lace on your forehead. Even if you glue it down, it's still going to show. That's really designed for stage. Exactly. Or so this is all the edge that you'll need to keep it. Okay, let's just hold that steady so I can just... Natural looking. Actually, I'm going to move that over here. You can barely see the line. Okay. And that's the way you want it to be. Just barely. Just barely. Okay. Perfect. Okay, Byron, teach me. Well, first of all, what you want to do is you're going to prep your hair. What we're going to do today is we're going to skip over that. I'm just going to show you uh, what happens to attach the wig. We're going to do a whole other video about prepping uh, because there's several different ways to do it. Okay. There are several different colors of wig caps. This one is black because the wig that we're using has black roots. Um, there are tan and there are also blonde wig caps, depending upon the color of the wig you are using. It should be as close to the base color of the wig as possible. When you look inside the wig, what color do you see? That should be the color that is the closest color to your cap as I well. I have no idea. I always just thought a wig cap was just to hold my hair down. I no. never thought about matching the wig. If you have a dark wig cap on and you have a very light wig, of chances course. are Absolutely. you will be able to see that black through the wax of the wig in the back or on the side or something like that. So that way you make sure you don't do that. So what I ask is I tell them to put their horns up, putting their fingers up and grabbing the front of the wig and just pulling it back. And we're just going to tuck her hair into the back very neatly. 
What I will do in the other video is showing you how to pin curl. And if you pin curl it properly underneath the wig, what you will get after you take the wig off is beautifully set hair. Um, you can actually curl it in such a way, uh, pin curl it in such a way that um, you can style the wig and it would be uh, basically baked into the actor's head during the performance. And so many performers that I've worked with have always had to go out afterwards oh, yeah. and meet people. Yeah, you always, so, you're always going out to dinner after the show. They never want, you know, to have wig hair and yep. have to deal with wig hair. So, um, such as uh, a couple of people that just come off the top of my mind, Kathleen Turner and uh, Leslie Ann Warren, when I was working with them, I did the same type of thing. Uh, so all they had to do is take the wig off, we took the pins out, they shook it, and just combed it out, and they had beautiful hair after the show. Oh yeah, you have to teach me that. Yes, I will. Thank you. Uh, what you'll want to do after you get the cap on is you will want to use hairpins to be able to hold it in place. This will all be explained in the other video, and I'll explain there's different techniques. There's the wig cap, there's also a head wrap, um, and uh, they, they work a little bit differently for different things. So right now, we have her hair all pulled back. I pulled the cap back to just in her hairline. And since she likes to put her own hairline into this, I'll pull it back just a little bit further so that we have that hair to pull out. Then, we take the wig and we place it on our head. Make sure that it is on correctly. Make sure that when you look inside that the wig, uh, the tag is centered into the back of the neck and the ear tabs are balanced over your ears like this. It's the easiest way to tell if they're like this or like this, yeah. then it's crooked. If you feel like your ear is sticking out like that, that's not, that's not right. One of the biggest mistakes people make, this is a side part wig. For some reason, I don't know why, they like to take them and try and center that. And then their wig is just really crooked. So make sure that your wig is centered properly. Uh, Want to put your fingers out there? Yeah, there we go. And you just pull it right down and it should land right under the nape of your neck where your skull turns in and it should land right underneath there. Yep. And what you want to do is the obvious thing that people want to do is they want to wear it like a baseball cap because they feel that it's more secure if you pull it down. Don't do that. Make sure that you go back and make sure it's back to where the hairline is at. And since we are going to be blending her hairline in, we're going to pull it back just a smidge more like this. And then I will get some pins. We'll cut them. So what you want to do is you want to take hair pins. Hair pins are the U-shaped pins, not the bobby pins. Yep. But these are hair pins. There's a difference between the two of them. May I have one real quick? I just want to do this before. Sure. So I don't forget. That's a hair pin. And what the pins that I use are matte pins, which you cannot find in normal drugstores or things like that. Uh, they're only in specialty beauty shops. And the reason why I use matte pins is because they don't shine. Matte, yes. So you don't get all these little reflections, boom, 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 especially when she's getting her picture taken and there's a thousand flash bulbs going off, those pins will show up. So I use flat matte pins so that there's no shine to them whatsoever. What I do is I go in and I, first of all, I put them at each ear tab. I poke from the back going forward until it's through the hair or through the net and then I turn it around and I twist it and then I push it back up inside. Oh yeah. That's and not going anywhere. She could feel how that you you can feel it when it goes right into the right spot. There's just a little sweet spot that happens and it's just something that after years of practice you, you can, can feel. You can feel it. it. Um, so once again from the back poking through the hair literally poke through the wig. Not, you might have to get a little rough with it sometimes. Tip it back. If you want to turn this way, around, tip it back so that it's pointed backwards and then slide it right up. Oh yeah. Just like that. Yep. So I put two there and then I also put two at the nape of the neck. So I come down, I find the bottom of the wig, catch it with the pins, flip the pin around and then push it up, catching the hair. How did that feel? That feels good. I'll never do math again. 
I and thought I, you I said you didn't. I, I don't do math as it is. I don't do math either. I don't do math. Yeah, we uh, we went to separate high schools, <laughs> but we still we failed miserably at math. <laughs> yeah. We're just we're we're relying on our Art. artistic abilities <laughs> <laughs> to get us through life. Now, once again, we'll go in for a close up on this. And since she's pulled the uh, adjustment bands very tightly, she's got a lot of play back here. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that the biggest part of it is the part that you pin down. So once again, from the back, you'll be going in this way, poke it through until you can feel it, and then touch onto her skin and catch the hair, flip the pin backwards so that it's pointing towards you, and push it back up into the wig. So like basically that. goes goes in, in catch up. the hair, and then up. Yep. And then from there, you can figure out where it doesn't feel right. If it needs some more, if you feel like it needs some more uh, uh, support, um, what I usually do is I put a couple right up in the very top. This particular wig has combs that are built into it, so you can use those as well. Um, most decent wigs now have combs built into them, but if they don't, um, there are pop clips that are available. And I just dig this right through in the top until I go through the wig. And then I feel that I've gone through the wig and then I flip it back and oh, push yeah, it that's... down like that. And then I do another one and I cross over. Is it so weird that I think that is a good feel? It's like, I don't know, there's something about that tightness that I, I like. Exactly, it, you it, know the wig is on, it, it feels really secure and you can now flip your head around. Oh, nice yeah, that and feels sturdy. Good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we pull it back just a wee bit, and you want to keep it out of your face. If you need to keep it out of your face while you're styling, duck build clips are the thing to do. Just take it back, hold it back like oh, that, yeah. keeps it right out of your face. My mom always calls those yo yets. Yo yets? Yeah. Well, you don't remember they had the hair salon back in the 60s. Oh, yeah, you I didn't, completely you, forgotten about that. that. No, that was, that's right, they were done with that by the time high school. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. But when I was a little kid, I grew up in a beauty shop. Well, my stepmother's, Yeah. she owns a beauty shop, and both of my sisters are uh, cosmetologists, too. I'm surprised our parents don't know each other. Uh, it's, I know, that's kind of strange. Um, I just haven't asked them. <laughs> Where is my pick? All right, and then what you want to do is you want to take your little pick and pull the hair out from the front, your own hair, so that we can blend it in. like that. Just get quite a bit up here to blend in. And this is what the, um, this is the trick that will make your wig look realistic because what people look at first thing is the hairline. They will immediately look at the hairline and that will tell them what's real, and what's not. And if they can't see the wig base, if they can't see the wig base, then they're gonna be a little confused because they're like, oh, wow, okay. I have had hairdressers come up and start photographing my hair. And I've had to say, no, it's a wig. No, it's a wig. No, it's a wig. And they're like, no, 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 I love your hair color. I'm like, no, it's a wig. They're like, no, but your hair. I'm like, it's not my hair. And they're they're hairdressers and they stare at it and they can't even see it. So we just blended her hair in just a little smidge here. And if you want, you can put some more pins in to make it uh, a little more secure. But I'm gonna turn around front here. Let's see what we got going. Oh, we got the pin on the other side still. So there we go. Am I beautimous? Very quick, very simple. And if you want, like this wig has a little wave to it. If you want, I would put some larger size hot rollers in your hair so that they have a little curl to them if you wanted to blend in even better. But just like this, and then a little spritz of hairspray, and you're ready to go. I, can I see? Yeah, let's find you a mirror. I love it, it looks so great. Now what I would like to do, so sometime, I like to get a, because this is so black at the root, I will take uh, 
see if I'll take some eyeshadow or I'll take some hair chalk or I'll take some of the, the root cover. And I won't do it right at the front because I like my silver right at the front, but I'll take like a little bit just back and I'll just put a little of that right over my own at the roots and that blends it even more. Yeah. So that's another another little blending trick. It I show great. that in the, the video where I do the purple hair. You can see how I show how to skew your hair color to match your wigs a bit. And by the way, the purple wig. It's on my website, wigsbybyron.com. It's very popular. It is. So yes, apparently it's selling out fast. So I have a few on back order. If you're still interested, go ahead and check those out. Uh, so what is this you. wig called again? This wig is uh, Silver Beach Waves. Silver Beach Waves. Yes, there, there's a picture of her wearing this, so you can't mistake it. Um, and um, and I love it because it's it's light and fresh. It, it's so, and that's how easy it is. Just make sure that it's pinned down. It feels nice and tight on your head, and then you can get away with anything. <laughs> Thank you very much, Byron, for helping show me how to make this wig look good and stay on my noggin without falling off because that's sort of important when you go out and about wearing a wig. Thank you very much for watching. We're going to have more wig care tips from Byron. He's going to help teach us a bunch of different things and there's only so much we can do in each video. This is this particular wig. We're going to have another lesson coming soon. Please subscribe to my videos if you haven't already. I love you bunches, and I will talk to you very soon. Please make sure you give me that thumbs up.